Hey friends, welcome back. So let's talk about Singapore inflation. A couple of days back, um, our Singapore Finance Minister Lawrence Wong made a statement about the outlook for Singapore's inflation. And I must say, the outlook seems pretty bad uh, for those who have been listening. And today I just wanted to share like my personal experience uh, about inflation in Singapore. What exactly is going on, like what caused it and what is uh, the outlook going to be? And what's my plan on trying to you know minimize the effect on inflation on my part? All right, so let's talk about my own personal experience. The first thing I've noticed is I like to use this um, ananas metric. You know, the $2 ananas you see around Singapore. So you go around and you look at ananas. You've noticed the portion have been getting ridiculously small and there was this famous ananas. I think the Jurong one, I used to visit there often. It's no longer $2. I can't remember which place I visit. The $2 ananas, I think it's Hojikang. The $2 ananas is now $3.50. Almost double of the usual price. I'm like, whoa. And recently, I also noticed that Starbucks kind of raise um, their price of their coffee, right? So then everything is uh, rising in price. Um, is it because the business are trying to earn more or is it genuine cost pressures that are coming to affect us? Right, so then our minister kind of made a statement about um, Singapore situation. I think he explained. So there's, there's a bit of a backstory to why inflation even um, kind of got very bad, right? I think the first big catalyst was COVID. Because COVID caused a lot of businesses to shut down. And when the whole world was on shutdown to prevent deaths, the economy just went to a standstill. So then I think the governments throughout the world created a like crazy amount of stimulus. Uh, the US had the first ever trillion dollar stimulus package. I think it's the first ever. And Singapore had the crazy $40 billion uh, package. And since our population is 5 million people, right? So if I calculate four, 40 billion divided by 5 million people, that means on average, each of us should, be, should have gotten about $8,000. So now the question is, did you and I got, uh, I'll get $8,000 last year? I don't recall getting $8,000, so that's just my two cents. <laughs> Jokes aside, uh, so with that huge uh, influx of capital into the economy, uh, the demand rose. You know, people had a lot of cash, so what did they start to buy? They start to buy stocks, so stocks went up like crazy. They started to buy property. So that's why Singapore property last year was just crazy high, right? So then, um, on the other hand, uh, when demand was crazy high, supply could not keep up. Right, because unlike your traditional, like you know, you just throw money into this uh, to create uh, demand, supply takes time to kind of build up. So, like for example, we needed to you know pump more oil. So to build all those rigs, it takes months of planning and effort. So therefore, uh, supply could not keep up with uh, demand. So therefore, it resulted in inflation. And another big concern is also because supply chain was also very pressured by um, all of these COVID lockdowns. I think, like for example, China. They did like a zero tolerance policy. So whenever there is a COVID outbreak, they just shut the whole port down. So then shipping costs like more than double. It went multiple folds uh, in for one container of ships last year. And even till today, uh, Shanghai recently just had a massive outbreak, right? It's Shenzhen in Shanghai. So then that creates even more supply chain shortages. So then supply is restricted, but demand keeps going up because of all the money that we're throwing at it. So then as a result, more problems ensue. The prices just go up because everyone has a lot of cash now, right? So fast forward to today, what is happening is that actually the supply chain problem is getting better uh, because people are starting to become smarter with how they run the business, uh, more investments have produced, you know, supply chain, um, effective supply chain workarounds. But then the Ukraine and Russia war happened. So why is this is uh, important is that because Russia and Ukraine, cumulatively, they export a lot of very important stuff. The biggest um, thing that everyone is aware of is oil and gas, right? So then, uh, yeah, Singapore is very, very affected by this. In fact, I think the statement said that last year or last quarter, the effective electricity rate was 42 cents per kilowatt hour. And right now, I think um, we've only been paying about 26 cents, 27 cents um, after tax. So we are being subsidized a lot. And this, this quarter, which is uh, 2022 quarter, it actually got better, but it is still insanely high at 36 cents per kilowatt hour. Back then, it used to be less, you know, 20 cents or 17 cents there about. So then therefore, with such a high uh, effective cost, 36 cents per kilowatt hour, SP is, you know, struggling to stay afloat. And imagine all the private retailers, if they are selling you at, you know, 26 cents, or they try to, you know, uh, give discount off SP's price, but yet their effective cost is 36 cents, they're going to go out of business, man. So then the question is, what can we do as um, consumers, right? So apart from energy, all the other areas are actually very massively impacted because all the refineries that use oil to you know refine stuff and to um, things such as your plastics, your fertilizers, your solvents, all of these are affected with high crude prices. And Russia and Ukraine not only exports oil, they also export a lot of other things um, which are very important such as metals which affects your cars, 
your battery, your chips, which is now crazy high because of uh, the GPU um, shortages, and food as well, like your wheat, which is your bread, your rice, your pasta, not rice, uh, then your barley. So things like this are gonna see a lot of prices, a price increase. So then I think as a Singaporean, I'm thinking like, okay, so what are some of the initiatives that the government will do to try to keep prices under control? So right now what they say is they're gonna take from the stockpile, but they admittedly said, that the downside risk has risen significantly because the economy is so hot now, it's very difficult for them to pump a lot more money into the system, right? If they pump a lot more money, what happens is that inflation will go out of control because there's a lot of money going around. But in order to stem inflation, the usual policy is to increase uh, interest rates, right? So if they increase interest rate because of the shaky economy right now, the recession risk is very high. The, the, the economy will go into recession now. Imagine your HDB loan go up to 4% interest rate. Wow, oh, there are a lot of people are not going to buy any other things, which is a lot of problem. So that's why uh, I think the minister, the finance minister said that the downside risk has risen significantly. So he's quote unquote hinting, or oh, maybe a recession might be near if they're not careful, or inflation is going to go out of control. So either or, it's very bad news for us as um, citizens. So right now, understanding that recession risks are high and inflation risk is also very high, what are my plans? I think the first and immediate role is that because I'm a crypto miner, I use a lot of utility, sadly. I, what I do is I lock in my utility rate. So I knew that like, uh, utility rates were going up, so I actually locked in a two-year Gynaco, uh, I think I pronounced the name Gynaco, um, 26 cents per kilowatt hour for two years. Um, hopefully they don't close down, so that's what I did. I locked down my utility rates, and that saved me now that's 28, went up by more than 10%, right? So it's 29, 29 cents. So then, um, now it's 29 cents, I save um, a good 10% of my utility bills every month. Um, then next thing is CDC vouchers. Always maximize them whenever I can. So apparently I'm not used to using CDC voucher, but it's quite easy to use. If you go to any coffee shop like what I'm in right now, uh, just, you know, use the CDC app, just claim, very easy. Every year you get CDC voucher. And of course, I try to apply for more business grants because um, they're literally throwing $8,000 per person in Singapore. So then the question is, are you getting $8,000? If not, it's time to go and grab those $8,000 uh, from the government, more or less, unless you're a you know, high-income person. And right now, on my own personal level, I'm also trying to build up my cash pile because I don't, I'm not a very astute investor. I don't like dig into all the annual reports and understand all the you know crazy growth numbers and find undervalued opportunities. I'm not Warren Buffett, so I can't find wonderful businesses to invest in at this point in time. So I'm just gonna sit by the sidelines, uh, build up my cash pile, and more importantly, I can control, because I know that uh, interest rates are gonna rise because they have to stamp out inflation. I'm trying to pay down your variable uh, debt, like for example, home loans. Um, I'm trying to faster pay them off and keep my cash pile, right? So that when opportunity arises, I can, you know, time to go big. So right now, uh, most of my money in stable coins are uh, in crypto mining. I'm just cashing them out to try to bring them to get guaranteed uh, profits and protect my downside protection. So this is just my two cents. I don't know if this is a fantastic idea. You let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And I'm gonna, just going to keep building my Batman Academy, building my YouTube channel, and hopefully this growth in passive income, systematic income from YouTube, my Batman Academy will sustain me through this supposedly upcoming tough times. And with that, I bid you all the best. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me and catch you in the next video. I hope you like this new video style. I'm trying to you know, make a more content, more casual style videos. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions, I'm happy to engage and take care everyone. Stay safe.